In the past, I've made it no secret that Thanksgiving is easily my favorite time of the year. The only thing about Thanksgiving I enjoy more than gobbling up food, though, is gobbling up knowledge. In fact, a couple years ago, we did an episode all on how we've been cooking turkey the wrong way. But now it's come to my attention that some people think that it wasn't the method of cooking that was the problem, but rather the fact that we were cooking turkey in the first place. So today I'm going to be taking a closer look at the challenger that's coming in to take the Thanksgiving crown, ham. Which giant hunk of meat should you be passing around the dinner table this Thanksgiving? We're about to find out. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Food Theory, the show that's the definition of based. Get it? Like a turkey based? Ugh, never mind. Everyone's always so eager to jump straight from Halloween to Christmas, completely neglecting the best holiday of them all, Thanksgiving. Making turkey hands, gathering with the family, watching more and more anime characters get added to the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. It's those traditions that you come to expect every year that makes Thanksgiving so special to me. But of course, no tradition is more synonymous with Turkey Day than, uh, well, the turkey itself. Each year, a whopping 88% of Americans scarf down turkey for Thanksgiving, but people seem to be less and less thankful for their Thanksgiving turkey with each passing year. In another study conducted in 2022, participants were asked to rank their least favorite Thanksgiving Day dishes. And guess what was voted the least favorite of them all? That's right, a cranberry sauce. But number two on that worst list was turkey. People like green bean casserole more than turkey? Who hurt you? To some, Thanksgiving turkey is too boring, too difficult, and when done wrong, it is too dry to be worth all the effort. And to that I say, well, go watch our Thanksgiving video from a few years ago where we teach you how to spatchcock. It's a method for making juicy turkey that's as fun to do as it is to say. But if this Thanksgiving classic ruffles these people's feathers, then what are they trying to put at the head of the table? Well, the new hot thing to cook up is apparently the other white meat, ham. Bucking historical tradition, people are hamming it up for the ham. Claiming that ham is a cheaper, healthier, and easier entree that actually pairs better with many of our favorite Thanksgiving side dishes. So today, I'm going to be putting them head to head based on each of those categories to see which one comes out on top as the new headliner for Thanksgiving. Ladies and gentlemen, theorists of all ages, it's time for the matchup that you've been waiting for. The battle in November to remember, it's Ham versus the undisputed heavyweight champion of this particular holiday, Turkey. For our main event, it's not about winning the most rounds, but rather who can get the most good shots in. After all, some things matter more when it comes to chowing down. We'll keep score, and when the final bell rings, whoever's on top is gonna be our champion. No hitting below the giblets there, friends, just some good, clean debating on both sides. Let's begin. Starting off, let's just take a look at history. When it comes to historical significance, people have been eating turkeys every November ever since the Pilgrims and the Wampanoag shared the first Thanksgiving back in 1621. Well, actually, we don't know for sure what was eaten during that famous first feast. According to some of the only surviving accounts of that first Thanksgiving, the Wampanoag went out and killed five deer, and the pilgrims sent four men to go fowling. And even though wild turkeys were a pretty common fowl in the 17th century New England, it's just as likely that they caught geese or ducks. Or most likely, probably some combination of all three, considering the size of the guest list that needed to be fed. The concept of the main Thanksgiving dish being turkey actually solidified much later. But whether it was the first Thanksgiving or after the Civil War, the fact of the matter is turkey has been the main entree for a long time. So ham is gonna have to really set itself apart in the other rounds if it wants to knock out the reigning champion. Camp. On to round two, nutrition. With so many different varieties and styles of turkey and ham, this ended up proving to be a bit harder to compare than I originally thought. Right off the bat, both turkey and ham, like most meals, are super low when it comes to carbohydrates. And sure, the glaze or the brine that you add to your meats can add a little bit of carbs in the form of sugar. In the end, both turkey and ham are decent additions to your plate if you're trying to take on the impossible remain keto during Thanksgiving challenge. However, pound for pound, turkey, especially the white meat, is just way better for you than ham. White meat turkey, for the same amount of calories per pound, has less fat, it has less cholesterol, and it has a heck of a lot less sodium than our porky little pal. Per 100 grams of ham, there is a full gram of sodium. Might not seem like much, I mean, that's just 1% after all, but in just 100 grams of ham, you'd be eating 65% of your daily recommended sodium level. And that's before you dig into any other holiday goodies. Excess sodium levels have been linked to heart disease, weight gain, and a slew of other health problems. But of course, white meat isn't the only meat that's coming off the bone when it comes to turkey. When compared to dark meat, ham starts to shine a bit more. Dark Dark meat turkey has more calories, more fat, and more cholesterol than ham, but still has more protein and much less sodium. But while all of this pound for pound punching might work fine for a boxing match, is it truly the fairest comparison for our food fight? If you saw our recent healthy fast food burger episode, you probably already know the answer to this. The fact of the matter is, we don't eat turkey and ham in quite the same way. When you're shopping for your Thanksgiving turkey, the rule of thumb is to buy between a pound and a pound and a half of raw turkey per guest that you're serving. On the flip side, when buying ham, you only need to pick up between a third and a half pound per eater. 
better. The reason is because ham loses significantly less weight than turkey when you cook it. Remember, ham is already processed by curing the pork, either with a wet or dry brine. So what you're buying is closer to the final weight of what you're actually going to be eating than with turkey. Don't think this means that it cancels anything out, though. Even if you take into consideration weight loss from cooking and the bones, you can still expect people to eat between half and slightly over four-fifths of a pound of just meat. This means that, well, yes, when you compare turkey and ham pound for pound, the battle looks lopsided. But considering the fact that you're expected to eat half as much ham on Thanksgiving as turkey, that evens the playing field quite a bit. When you compare them this way, ham actually has about the same amount of fat, but less calories and less cholesterol than even the white meat. All of this being said, though, is this even a relevant comparison? Thanksgiving isn't about being healthy, and unfortunately for ham, turkey gets the bonus of a one-two combo of having different meats to serve your family based on their taste, dark or white. Plus, we have to tack on another point here because of how much turkey you can and usually do eat. If the meal's all about eating a whole lot and celebrating that fact, well, turkey's got it down. For our next round, let's consider the less fun, but certainly important part of the holiday experience, the price. Prices for everything in the grocery store seem to be going up every single year, but usually your average American spends around $35 for a 15 pound turkey. With the average cost of ham being around $5.65 per pound, a seven and a half pound ham, which remember should feed about the same amount of people as a 15 pound butterball, should cost you around 42 bucks. Throw in the fact that you also have to pay extra to have your ham pre-brined and deboned, and it's clear that turkey is the economical option here. That being said, since ham is a lot easier to find in smaller portions compared to your turkey, if you have a smaller or less meat-inclined family to feed, or you don't feel like having leftovers for a week that you end up throwing away anyway, you might find ham a better option to prevent food waste. <laughs> Cost and nutrition are certainly major considerations when preparing for your Thanksgiving feast, but we all know what Thanksgiving is really about, and that's the taste. And no, I'm not just gonna sit here and debate the tastiness of turkey versus ham. That comes down to more of personal taste. But still, there's more to Thanksgiving than just the main show. For many, it's the side dishes that really get our mouths a watering. You may assume, if we switch from turkey to ham, that everything else is gonna go flying out the window, but fret not. What if I told you that ham actually pairs just as well, if not better than turkey, when it comes to all your favorite fall-time foods? A quick Google search about best side dishes to pair well with ham actually returns you many familiar faces. Carrots, green bean casserole, mashed potatoes. Some of the best Thanksgiving side dishes should taste even better when placed on the plate next to ham. Why? Well, turkey's a great protein to pair with a lot of things because of how plain it is. It allows it to be a canvas that you can pair a variety of flavors with, but doesn't provide much in terms of flavor by itself. Ham, on the other hand, pairs well with all the familiar sides because just like we covered, it's salty and brined, and so it packs a punch of flavor already. While your heart might not appreciate those elevated salt levels, your tongue will. When it comes to flavor pairings, there's a couple of tricks to optimizing flavor. The first thing to keep in mind is that salt is king, really. Professional chefs often say the difference between their cooking and schlubs like us is how much salt they're using. So piling on salty dishes, especially naturally salty ones like pork, should make for the most tastiness. The other key is to have the same flavor profile appear in multiple dishes. If our ham is salty, side dishes that are also salty will help build a cohesive gastronomic through line. That means that sides that are rich in butter or cheese like mashed potatoes potatoes or potatoes au gratin can be elevated by placing them next to your salty Thanksgiving ham. The other way to enhance the flavors of your meat is to have flavors that don't mimic but complement the main dish. If you want to elevate your sodium-laced ham, balance it against something sweet. Sweet potatoes, all kinds of pie, even the oft-hated cranberry sauce would actually be improved by quitting turkey, uh, cold turkey. Some of you might have noticed that there's one classic component that I haven't mentioned yet, and that's the stuffing. Traditionally, stuffing is cooked inside your Thanksgiving bird, which allows the juicy flavors of the turkey and stuff to co-mingle. However, for a variety of reasons, more and more families are opting to cook their stuffing separately. And yeah, I know that technically makes it dressing, not stuffing, but I'm just gonna call it stuffing because that's what we all know it as. When you cook your stuffing outside of the turkey, it speeds up the cooking time by somewhere between 15 and 45 minutes, depending on the size of the bird. And if you've ever had a hungry house of people waiting not so patiently for their turkey, that time can be a game changer. Some have even gone so far as to say that the stuffing is more juicy when cooked on its own, since it's less likely to be overcooked. So consider making that stuffing on the stovetop while your spatchcocked turkey sits in the oven. It might not just taste better, it may also be safer as well. If you've cooked a turkey before, you know that the magic number for the internal temperature is around 165 degrees Fahrenheit. That's because turkey, like most other fowl, have a significant risk of salmonella poisoning. Making sure the entire bird gets to 165 degrees ensures that all the bacteria that may otherwise be inside the turkey is killed off. But since we often check the bird and not the stuffing, if the stuffing also doesn't reach 165 degrees, the risk of food poisoning is very real. That's why the USDA doesn't recommend any 
anyone cook their stuffing inside the turkey anymore. And if cooking your stuffing is faster, juicier, and safer without the turkey, then there's no reason you can't have your stuffing with anything, including ham. Heck, you could probably experiment with the flavor profile of your stuffing to make it sync up even better with the ham. Throw some mustard, garlic, even some spring onion in there. Mm. All right, we're down to the final round. Final chance to score any points. Forget all the nutrition, the price, the flavors. I think the real reason people are opting away from Thanksgiving turkey is because of how gosh darn difficult it is to cook right. First, you have to defrost the thing, which can take several hours or even days, depending on how you're doing it. Next, you have to meticulously brine the bird so it's nice and tender the way you like it. Then, if you're spatchcocking, you gotta sadistically break its bones to flatten it. And only then does the cooking process truly begin. And it's not like you could just set the timer and check back in when it's done. Between keeping a constant eye on the temperature, basting it like there's no tomorrow, and juggling all the different side dishes, waiting for a turkey to roast is more akin to waiting on a NASA mission. And after literally slaving over a hot stove all day, what's the thanks that you get? Well, if you are successful, you get a pat on the back. But if that turkey comes out even the tiniest bit dry, you basically ruin Thanksgiving for everyone. But why? Why does turkey all too often come out tasting dry despite our best efforts? Well, that's because turkey, despite being one singular bird, is more like cooking two different cuts of meat at the same time. I covered this in the Spatchcock episode, but essentially the dark meat and the white meat cook at different rates, with the dark meat usually reaching that all-important 165 degrees last. That means that while you're waiting for that turkey leg to raise the last couple of degrees, your already cooked white meat is drying out and fast. The Spatchcock method does help, but the risk of drying is still very real. Ham is the cooler, lower maintenance option. Despite taking a bit longer to cook at 18 to 20 minutes per pound compared to turkey's 13, it ends up being significantly less stressful and is more likely to produce a juicy bite every time due to ham's higher fat content. Throw in how much easier it is to cut and serve the ham compared to the veritable brain surgery that you need to do on turkey to get it on people's plates, and I think it's time that we call the fight. Any last words, gentlemen? No? Well, after tallying up the scores, it's clear that we have ourselves a pretty evenly fought match. Turkey still sneaked out ahead, but Ham brought in plenty of solid evidence that it should be the king of the Thanksgiving table. Which means that in the end, the final winner of this battle is... <laughs> Ostrich. You see, in researching this episode, the debate centered around ham and turkey, but there's another option that should be talked about here even more. The ostrich. Another flightless bird that we often overlook is starting to rise in popularity, even if it's not being looked at quite yet for Thanksgiving. Ostrich has less fat, less calories, less cholesterol, and higher protein than even turkey. Because of its low fat and high protein levels, it does run the danger of overcooking, like turkey, but there's an important detail that separates it. You can cook it medium rare. Due to the ideal pH balance of the meat, there's little to no risk of it being contaminated with salmonella and E. coli like other fowl. That means you ideally just cook it like a premium steak. And it doesn't just cook like a nice juicy steak, it also has the taste of that steak. While you're busy drowning your turkey and ham and gravy and mustard to try and get it down your gullet, ostrich is described as tasting closer to filet mignon. That said, it also comes with the cost of filet mignon. Couple bucks cheaper, but uh, ostrich ain't winning any points in the price category. Basically, it has all the benefits of red meat, but in bird form. Heck, it even produces a tenth of the greenhouse gases of your other red meat. So from a sustainability standpoint, it knocks everything else out of the park. Is it the cheapest option available? No, not by a long shot. But for a once a year spectacle, tell me that you wouldn't be the talk of the town if you started serving ostrich for Thanksgiving. It's got the taste, the versatility, and the wow factor that makes it deserving of being the next headliner for Thanksgiving. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit.